Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. It's time to give my original tier list an update for patch 0.9.0. .0. I made the first one back in the preview patches, and a few of the champions have gone through some changes since then, not to mention the whole creation of a meta has arisen as well. Here are the rules and criteria from my tier list. Number 1. I will be organizing the champions in alphabetical order, and there won't be an order within each tier. For example, the first spot won't be better than the next spot, and so on. Number 2. The champions will earn their ranks based on competitive and meta viability. It will be a combination of their individual power and how they fit into certain decks. I will touch on casual viability, where they were on the last list, and other nuances, but it won't affect where they are ranked. Number 3. I don't have hard stats to back this up, it is a combination of my opinion, analysis, and experience. I've hit top 50 in NA, so I at least have a foundation to speak on. With that, let's get it! Anivia. In the last video, I put Anivia in A tier. She used to cost 1 less mana, but couldn't block. Also, she now levels up by reaching 10 maximum mana, so overall she's a lot better. If the game itself hadn't changed so much, she could stay in A tier, but I'm gonna put her in B. And here's why. The game is too fast for Anivia to really shine. Even in control decks like War Mother's Freljord SI, she is an optional inclusion. I've never once run into her and thought, oh this is a problem. At most, she's a little nuisance when she hits the board, but by then, the game is usually already decided, and so is her spot on this tier list. Ash. I put Ash in S tier in the previous list, and that is not changing. There's still a mid-range Ash deck with Noxus cards splashed in, hanging out in high diamond viability. I faced it a few times in my own climb, and it is really solid. I wouldn't say broken by any means, but it was strong enough and consistent enough to deal with elusives, and since that's still a deck even after nerfs, Ash's Frostbite army can lead the charge in S tier. Braum had his time in the spotlight of S tier in the last video, but I'm bumping him down into A. He's a good champion, especially if he gets buffed by a stray Omenhawk hit, or if Take Heart is used on him. He goes from tanky staller and annoyance to, hmm, I can transition this into a win condition. He's a good secondary powerhouse if you have the cards for him, but it does take some setting up, therefore A seems like a good fit for him. Darius. If you're teching Darius as a finisher, then he's just a win more card or a way to close out the game. Unfortunately, he's fragile to frostbite, stuns, and other removal spells, and he's a pretty bad card from behind. Based on the upgrade animation alone, he would be in S tier, but as a card, I have to put him in B tier. Draven is a cheap champion and even has a support card that puts him at the top of the deck, so he has consistency too. I had him in B tier before, but I think he deserves a bump up due to his appearance in aggro Noxus P and Z decks. With the right board, he adds just enough spice to run the game over. One could argue that other cards would do the same thing in an aggro deck, but his stat line, plus quick attack, plus card generation that can be used for combat tricks or discard fodder says otherwise. Let's go Draven, you've earned your spot in A tier. Elise is an easy S tier champion, and is a perfect example of my rating criteria. First, let's judge her on individual power. A 2 mana 2-3 two, is premium stats, and then she also has fearsome and the spider tag? Oh my god, she is everything that you want in a 2 drop minion. Summoning a 1-1 one, one on every attack is also great value. Not the Walmart brand, it's actually good. You know what, never mind. In most Shadow Isles decks, she's an auto-include 3 of, even without playing spider synergy cards. It doesn't matter if she gets leveled up or played towards because she is a great body with a must-remove aura around her. Now, let's judge her on deck viability. She appeared in Mono Shadow Isles variants, and even had her own aggro spider deck in Diamond and Masters. Yeah, I think she deserves S tier. Ezreal is also S tier following Elise. He has a really strong deck in Diamond and Masters, but I personally think it's cheesy, especially when you add the El Nuke package that Swim really likes to play. Like, come on bro, I love you, but stop playing this deck nonstop, it's not good for your sanity. All you have to do is stall and use your removal effectively. Don't play Ezreal early unless you're rocking all three copies in your hand, and you'll be good to go with this deck and with this champion. Fiora. Uh, Fiora's really scary, but I don't think she's broken. I had a really high opinion of her in the last tier list video, which put her in S tier, but I think I'm gonna bump her down into A. 
She's honestly solid and has a bunch of support for her. She's also good against elusive decks because of her challenger keyword, but she does get frostbitten easily, and her targets can be hit by Glimpse Beyond if she's against the Shadow Isles deck. Uh, along with getting Will of Ionia, her game plan is fragile, and can be stalled. But if she's not, she's really oppressive. The more I think about it, the more polarizing she actually is as a champion and a win condition. I'm going to put Garen in C tier, and it's not his fault, it's the meta's fault. He's just not good right now, or seen too much right now. He doesn't need a buff or anything, he just needs to see a meta shift towards more mid-range and minion-based control games. On a side note, it's really interesting to compare this to League. Sometimes champions don't need an immediate buff, they just need other things to get hit, or a meta shift to happen, to become flavor of the month. I feel like this is extremely similar. Anyways, back to Garen. He comes down too late against aggro, and gets removed too easily by control. On a casual level, he's really strong, same with Expeditions, but he's just not crusading for justice as passionately as he used to. Hecarim is the best champion in the game. If there was an S plus tier, that's where he would be. The funny thing is, I don't think anyone will argue with me on that. 3 Hecarim plus 3 Rekindler equals 6 copies of Hecarim in the deck. He single-handedly gave Mono Shadow Isles a win condition, and is off giving other decks win conditions too, just by including him. For the same cost of Darius, Hecarim just does so much more. It's sad though, because in terms of Hecarim and Ephemeral decks, he'd be B tier or maybe A, because Ephemerals are like a very average competitive deck, but his individual power is so high, and his synergy with Rekindler is so insane, that he rides into S tier easy. Heimer is a big brain card, I put him in B tier during my last video, but now I'm bumping him up to A. I know there are Heimer decks in Diamond and Masters right now, but I've personally felt like they're just good, not broken. I probably have like a 10 to 1 win-loss ratio against them, and the couple times I lost, it was because I didn't draw well or didn't play well, in which any deck probably could have trounced me. If you're struggling to choose Heimer or Ez, pick Ez. Jinx. Oh man, Jinx is hitting up the C spot along with Garen, and mainly for the same reasons. She's not necessarily bad, as her individual power is actually pretty good. I would even say A tier, but this list is a combination of in individual power plus meta viability. She's sometimes played in the same decks that Draven is, but for one more mana cost, she gets removed by the same things like Get Excited or 3 attack challenger units while not providing spinning axes like Draven. Discard decks are also not extremely good right now. They would need a combination of a meta shift and one or two more support cards in order to be top tier. Casually though, a full on discard deck with mega death rockets every turn is extremely fun. If you're just playing normals and love jinx, don't let this discourage you. Alright next, uh, Callista sucks, C tier. Karma. Karma has picked up some popularity recently. What? I have to give some context to Callista? Why? What does she ever do for me? Oh right, the same thing she does for everyone, absolutely nothing. Uh, okay, fine. In the preview patches, her bonded ally used to take damage for her, and they removed it while giving her fearsome, and now the bonded ally gains two attack. whoop de freaking do Best case scenario, she bonds to a champion, and summons them back on attack when she levels up, but that's never going to happen, because she dies to the smallest coronavirus sneeze. Okay, back to Karma. I'm going to put her in S tier, because of recency bias. There are a lot of decks utilizing her combo potential, especially with Lux. If you have multiple copies, you can throw down one before turn 10 to get a free spell or two as well. Katarina. Katarina is pretty difficult card to play around. The challenge is quite similar to how she is in League 2, which is actually hilarious. The creators of this game has captured how champions feel so incredibly well. Anyways, Kat has only been seen recently in Yasuo decks because she recalls herself for his level up condition. That deck is probably still like B tier, bordering A if you draw really well, but her individual power is really low. So I want to put her in C tier along with Garen, Jinx, and Callista. Yeah, I think I'll do that. C tier because even in a Yasuo deck, she's tempo suicide and not played around as a win condition. Lucian and Senna are very good Demacian cards to splash into any deck with the extra space. 
they provide a strong early game if you're focusing on closing it out with 4 Demacia or something. Uh, Lucian also creates a heavy rushdown beatdown strategy that can be very strong from ahead, but due to them not seeing any competitive deck viability currently, I'm going to put him in B tier. Again, isolated A tier, easy, and casually very good cards to play around, keep that in mind. Lux. Lux got buffed last patch and is now tearing it up with Karma, but I'm going to put her in A tier. Mainly because she's the lesser half of the two, it's quite obvious that Karma is the star of the show and Lux is the supporting cast. Also, if this deck didn't exist, her individual power would put her at B or even C tier. I think taking both things into consideration and averaging her at A seems fair. Shen. Shen sucks too. C tier. Like, what is going on with this guy? If Hecarim is the best champion in the game, then Shen is the worst. He just doesn't know what he should be doing. Supporting Fiora and helping her win through barriers? Build a deck with barrier synergy and try to swing, or OTK with big attack units that are all protected? Okay, well neither of these strategies carry competitive weight at all. And individually, he has abysmal stats and needs to be paired with something else to even get his effect off. Barrier needs more support cards for him to be viable. Ah, Teemo. I put Teemo in S tier during the last tier list, but wait, I can explain. It was a simpler time back then. The meta wasn't developed yet, so Teemo's Shroom crew could thrive easily, but now the strategy is too slow and too weak. Individually, he gets Corona sneezed on, like Callista, and he dies. Also, people run elusives or anti-elusive stuff in every deck because of the meta, making Teemo never achieve a Nexus Strike. It hurts me to say this, but as it stands right now, Teemo is C tier. Thresh. I think Thresh is B tier. It's so hard to include him in Mono Shadow Isles because you need 3 Elise and 3 Hecarim. There's just no room. The same thing applies in most decks that run Shadow Isles at all. Thresh is being overshadowed by the big spooky horse. He's good individually, and I love the idea to run him against elusives or zoo strategies to level him up fast and get a free champ. The potential is there, but the execution currently isn't. Trindamir. Trind is just being Trind, pissing people off and being quite pissed himself. He's a good late game beat stick that doesn't die, but that's all there is to him. Your opponent will either have an out to him or not have an out to him. Just like my Trind top lane in solo queue, he's a coin flip champion. Individually, an A tier champion, but no real decks to utilize him in. Just like a Nivea, the control decks that include him don't need him, he's optional, so I'm going to opt to put him into B tier. Vladimir is the premier zoo deck enabler. For those of you who don't know, zoo means flooding the board with cheap and small minions. He works well with this strategy because of the whittling he can do to the enemy nexus. There are some spell cards that deal 1 damage to your own minion and give it plus 2 attack, which satisfies his level up condition while creating lots of damage. He's been popping up recently with some success. I've been destroyed by the deck a couple of times, but also blow it out of the water the rest of the time. I think the overall deck needs like 1 or 2 more support cards to stand on its own 2 feet, and depending on how good they are, will influence this rating. Since his individual power is high and I've seen the deck in Masters, I'm obligated to put him in A tier. Yasuo. Yas is a fan favorite champion, and he just got buffed. A pretty refined version of the deck popped up for a few days, but just like the avatar, it suddenly vanished. He's pretty fragile and has the same stat line as Jinx, but at least he has the ambient effect to deal damage to things that get stunned or recalled. The deck didn't really do too much to the meta, and ran into some problems with gatekeeper elusive decks. I'm going to put him in B for now but I wouldn't be surprised if he comes back again mastering all four elements of tech cards to counter the meta and deserve a higher spot on the tier list. And we're down to our last champion currently in the game, Zed. Individually, Zed is already an S tier champion. I would consider him the best 3 drop in the entire game next to Frenzied Skitter. He's also premiered in multiple elusive decks and Demacia decks as well. His versatility and menacing pressure that he puts out easily puts him at S plus tier along with Hecarim. I would say these two champions are in a league of their own, but for the sake of how nice this looks, this is the first time I've organized the tier list actually and visualized it. I cannot believe that there are six champions in each tier. 
I swear this was not scripted. Well, the video is scripted, but n not this. This is crazy. But with that, that, uh, that about wraps up my updated tier list video. I've played so much in order to understand the ins and outs of these champions, their decks, and their influence on the meta itself. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What champion am I completely sleeping on? What champion am I giving too much credit? Tell me what your favorite deck is to watch or play so far. I also stream on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Check out my channel and other socials in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters.